Well, hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today I have a little Copic coloring for you using the hex chart and we're gonna color on Desert Storm. If I accidentally refer to this as craft during this video, I apologize. The paper from Nina is called Desert Storm. It's not craft colored. If you look at the card base on the outside edges, that's craft color. And so you can see that this is definitely lighter than craft, but this is what the finished card is going to look like. So I have my image stamped and my sentiment is a little kitty wampus because I'm going to make a sign out of that and draw that sign in with a pen. I need a Copic friendly pen so that I can color without that line bleeding and I'm using my multi-liner SPs and they have a bunch of different widths of lines and I'm going to pick out the one that's going to work best for the stamped image because I want it to be about the same weight as the image itself. These SP pens, you can refill them, you can put new nibs in them and everything. There's also versions of these multi-liners that aren't refillable. And I've had those for years and they've lasted forever. So if you want to buy the less expensive ones that are not refillable and replaceable, then there will be links in the doobly-doo for those as well. But they're super helpful if you're going to add any little drawn details to an image that you want to color. So I've drawn a very loose little box around my text. I didn't have to be straight, use a ruler or anything because it's a wooden sign and I'm going to let it have some character the way the little stamp has character. I'm going to add some dimension to the sign, but you could certainly do this sign with just that box line. You don't have to do the rest of this that I'm doing. I want to add a stick coming out of the top as well and kind of doing a little jog around that area on the top that I, you can see me drawing right now and I'll make a rough edge on the top of that stick just to add a little bit more character to it as well. And now I'm ready to color without any of those lines bleeding and it looks like it's part of the same stamp set. Now here's the hex chart, if you haven't seen it yet. The hex chart has colors arranged in visual order, so I started with all my skin tones and then I wanted all my browns together, blues, greens together, so I could compare them to each other. And I'm gonna show you how I choose colors throughout this video. The second page is the grays, which we don't usually refer to too much on our charts, so I left that on the second page so these numbers could be bigger. The oranges, the light oranges, is kind of the area that I want to have all of the, the, the fur on this little guy. I could go over to the brown area, but I'm going to start with the oranges because I want to try to see if I can keep him kind of light and bright and orangey fur. And as soon as I put this marker down, I realized that that was going to be darker than the color that I wanted. So I'm going to just put the shadows in. I'm just going to start with the shadows this time since I had the marker out. And now I'm going to skip over a little space, a few spaces over, and I'm going to go for a Y17 because it's a much brighter color. And even though right here what you're seeing in that, that dull yellow, it's going to be a little duller than it would be, of course, on white but that yellow is going to dry out a little bit. What you're seeing partially is the moisture in the paper. And you don't normally see that on white paper because it's such a really faint, faint, faint spot of water or alcohol, but you'll see it much more on this one. Now his cheeks I wanted to do, I would normally do an RV10 for his hands and his little, like little bright, ruddy cheeks but I decided to go for an RV02 because I needed a little more intense color. The RV10 would just disappear, and then I softened it with a zero marker. Next is going to be his outfit, and even though some of those duller colors over um, on the left-hand side that I was pointing to are the colors I'm aiming for, I picked one way from the right, that G82, way over on the right-hand side, because it's a brighter green. But you can already see it's darker, just by the nature of being on this paper. So any of the colors you're gonna choose, you wanna go for something brighter. You can already see his little fur is starting to feel much more yellow now as that moisture has started to dry out of it. So now I've got the base color on his little, his little hat as well, and I'm gonna add color to his ears and just do a little bit extra on his cheeks just to give him a little bit more love there on his little happy cheeks. And so that's the color I've got for his outfit, and I'm going to pick a couple colors, the BG99 and the G94, for his little pants. And those are colors that aren't as dark as I might have potentially chosen, just because I'm already getting the darkness from the paper not being white. 
So I'm going to add my shadows around, around here and I'm going to give him like a really round belly. And you can do that by just adding that little C-shaped um, thing underneath of his tummy. And that'll just give a real nice shadow to it and emphasize that he's a fat little scout. <laughs> I just, I'm in love with him. I'm totally in love with him. When Emily sent this to me, I just grinned from ear to ear and I was like, I have to color him now because he's so cute. Just love their images. You're going to see a little more from, uh, from me and Stamping Bella coming up very, very shortly. So stay tuned to my blog for that. All right, so now I want to pick this really super, super light kind of a color, but I want it to be a little bit, uh, just a different feel. So I'm going to go for that YG11. I know YG11 is normally kind of an electric green on other papers, on white papers, but look how beautiful it comes out here. It gives me the feel of just some really soft shadows on his either light green or white shirt but it's just going to give me a just a hair's difference of color. Now for his red elements on there, he's got a little tie and backpack and everything. I'm going to use the R14 because I decided to pick a lighter red instead of a darker red that I might normally choose to color something like this. So his his little tie, he's got straps on his backpack and the backpack itself, the straps on the sleeping bag, all of that is that the red is going to go darker but then I can take my normal R29 that I might have used that a lot of people would use as a, a red object and I can use that for my shadow but this color allows me the room to add a shadow that isn't super super dark so that I can I can use my chart in that way to find what colors are going to work best with whatever image I'm coloring. So here I'm adding my my smoothness back out after adding my R29 shadows. So now I want to get into some more greens and I'm, I'm just kind of assessing different greens and which ones I actually want to use for his shoes because I wanted his shoes to feel a little bit closer to brown but not, not as green as his pants and so I went with a YG93 and then a G99. Um, it's not in numerical order and that's one of the things you may find as you use the hex chart that you don't have to go in numerical order. I'm a big fan of the number system and I do use it a lot. But what I do find, even myself, as I'm using the hex chart, I'm using more colors that don't necessarily follow in numerical order, but they work really great together. So I'm adding a little shadows again to his shirt because that color that I had chosen was so, so, so light that it could really stand some extra deep shadows. And so I used my light green from the shoes to pull that color again up to his shirt and realize that I forgot part of his backpack. Now his uh, sleeping bag, I wanted to choose a, a blue that was maybe a little bit duller of a blue because I didn't want too much attention to it, but I still had to pick a B02 in order for it to be nice and bright and, and show up because otherwise it could turn into a gray really easily because blue and brown together, if you picture just laying a mask of this brown color over top of anything you've colored on white paper, that's pretty much the color you'll end up getting. So I've added a little bit of pink to his nose and now a little bit of yellow on his glasses and only a little of the color that's actually on his fur. And then I picked a lighter yellow for the inside of the glasses because when you look through any glass, you're gonna see a lighter shade behind it generally. And that's, that's the way you can make something look like glass. And now I've gone to an E47 just to pick a dark brown. I needed some more contrast in my image. If you know my stuff, you know I love my contrast. So I've added a darker brown and now I'm going back in with my YR14 again just to add a little smoothness to that and soften up his fur a little bit. Add a, add a few more little furry hairs to his hands and his cheeks and everything and he's coming along pretty well. I'm pretty excited with where he's headed. Now, as I was creating this, at this point, I wasn't really sure where the background was gonna go. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, so I was kind of doodling around and messing around with adding shadows and deepening some shadows and stuff while my brain was rolling because I knew I needed something behind the sign, but I wasn't sure what yet. So I thought, well, let me get the sign going 
and hope that the colors that I choose for the sign are going to work with whatever it is I pick in the background. But I went with the same colors that are in his fur because I wanted something that will pull that color across the image. You may know that I, I like to unify an image, that's what I call it at least, using similar colors across different parts of an image. Use them in different ways so that they don't look like they're made of the same material, but I'm just using the yellow and the yellow-red color across this main part of the sign so that you know we just get a little bit more of that happy brown color especially since I know that it already works as a good bright color and I've already tested that out and all of this by the way I didn't test out on scratch paper you're seeing the first time coloring this so uh, yeah I was I was inventing on the fly and changing my mind about things as I went so here I'm going to add the wood grain to both the stick that it's um, sticking into the ground and to my sign, but I don't want these dark brown lines across the words or I'm never going to be able to read them. So I'm going to put a little bit of the dark brown around the edges and just flick a few lines in from the outside edges. It's going to give it some definition and then finish off the pole a little bit with some just wiggly lines. They don't even have to be like even or anything. And then I decided to go to my chart and figure out from the Y14 to the E47. That's where the distance is. And what's about in the middle? And I looked and there was an, you know, like an E15, an E99. And I decided to give the E99 a shot first and see what that looked like. So here's the E99. And you can see it, it does work pretty well. You can kind of draw over the words and still see them somewhat. So I decided not to go completely over it, and then I wanted to see what the E15 did and test that out. And to my eye, they both looked about the same. And I'll show you in a few minutes how they're different, but the two colors came out looking about the same in this use. But I also realized there was too much fussiness going on around the words and I wanted them more readable, so I went over it with the Y17 just to soften all of that. And then I took my E99 and wanted to just kind of blend out a little bit more on that that pole so that it didn't stick out like a sore thumb either. Now for the ground, this is where I thought this would be a good place to test out what's the difference between an E99 and an E15. Since I pulled both of those colors out, let's see what they do on the ground. So the E99 is at the top and then the E15 is just a little bit redder. You can see there's a little more yellow in the E99 and sometimes that's a big difference for you when you're coloring animal fur. If you want to push something more toward yellow, pick one of the browns that has more yellow in it. And you can see that easily, relatively easily at least, on the chart. Sometimes you won't see it until you start coloring with it like this. But I'm going to just scratch in a little bit of texture. A lot of that is going to be cut off at the bottom and at the very top when I start putting the card together. But for now, I just wanted to rough it up a little bit and then add some grass. So I'm going to use some of the same colors that I used on our little scouts outfit and then I'm going to use the same brown to add the shadows underneath of his feet. And the lighting on this doesn't show exactly how intense some of this color is because it is a little bit blown out but you can definitely still tell that a lot of that color is softening over time. So a lot of that moisture that was in the paper as it dries back the colors are going to lighten a little bit. And so you may find that you need to go back in and add some deeper, darker shadows as you continue on with your image. All right, so now it came to the point of figuring out what to do in the background of this image. So I took the B02, the same color that was in that backpack, and started sketching in just a couple of mountain shapes, just really loose, a couple little angled shapes. And then I took a B00 so I could do something really soft because as we know that on this craft paper, something with a couple zeros in it is not gonna show up very much and that's good. I just wanted a little hint of something out there behind him as if he's out on the trail and being friends forever <laughs> since he's a scout. I thought that would be fun to just have something out there. And then I came up with this idea to add some really tall grasses because since he's such a little guy the grass is going to be huge compared to him. So I started with one of my very light greens and just started making strokes. With uh, the ones on the far right I had to flick at the end so that the grasses would have grass shapes and um, 
flicking is just when you lift up on the pen as you get to the end of a stroke so then it ends up being a really thin one um, just like I'm doing here and then in between I could just make straight strokes because the flicked end of each one of those pieces of grass would actually just be behind the sign so you're not going to see it so I can just do linear strokes in between there and then I took darker greens progressively and just added a little bit more detail to each one of those um, each one of the grasses and did less and less as I continued on doing layers of of the different greens and so the the lightest one had the most in the background and then I'll just do a very very few of these little pieces of grass with I'm just gonna do doodles of I'm not sure if they're little flowers or little little heads on the grasses or something just to add a little bit of detail a tiny bit of interest in the background but it's all going to be so soft that really you're not going to see very much of that at least your eyes not going to notice it but one of the things that I do find is when you add those little details onto a card it makes a difference in the overall impression the card has so here's the finished little guy you can see definitely the difference between the craft card stock on the card base and the color of the paper itself but the hex chart was like super helpful in picking the colors for this and I'll remind you again the tape on my markers is really only to mark them as my possession not as anything but that all right I will talk to you guys later here's a couple more videos that I have done with stamping Bella images if you want to go see those and I will see you guys later have a really great week bye bye